My name is Daniel Gallant. I'm 38 years old. I currently live in Prince George, British Columbia, Canada. I'm studying uh, masters in social work, focusing on disengagement from right-wing extremism. I spent about almost I spent almost a decade in the white supremacist movement in Canada, um, and I'm now engaged in a lot of counter. Uh, counter-extremist and anti-racism work. I didn't know anybody who had left. Um, no one I was directly, that I d directly knew left. Um, there was one guy who, who was prominent in the Canadian scene. He had left uh, prior to me entering, I believe. And around the time when I was introduced to the internet, there was a lot of talk about him. They always said that the, there was a, a hit on him or that they were going to kill him and that sort of thing. So I had heard that stuff, but I was never directly related to it. For me, my disengagement process, it wasn't an immediate thing. Um, I had stopped drinking and using drugs. Uh, a couple months later, I went to a treatment facility. Um, it was in, I was encouraged by the counselor there to get go into post-secondary school to challenge my belief structures because there's no therapist or counselor or medication that could help me. Um, and I needed to unlearn things if I wanted to be a productive member of society and not be in conflict with the world. I was clean and sober for about a year and a half. I was sitting in a room full of white supremacists that I knew, hanging out with them and getting caught up on the things that have happened over the last year. And after that meeting, I was walking down the road and two black guys were selling drugs and I was spitting on them. I realized that I was doing this sober and away from everything right after I left this meeting. So everything came back instantly. So I knew I had to sever. So I sat down with my one good friend, told him I was leaving, and he had said, oh, that AA stuff, you've joined a cult. And, and it, that was my first consideration of the movement as being cultic. And I just looked at him and I said, no, I think we're the cult. And that separation in my mind in that moment was final. So I never had any more association with anybody never went on any more websites. It was hard. Um, and then a couple of years later, I reached out to a, another former and he had told me that there's nothing he could do to help me. Um, so, so there, af after that, there was no relapsing sort of speak. And then I had come forward with information on a bombing uh, that was perpetrated by a guy I recruited due to a, an epiphany and social obligation. And that completely severed any potential for me going back to the movement whatsoever. And that took several months of consideration. But I, I took that step, knowing that I would be alone and knowing that other people would probably judge me for my past involvement. But I was already alone in life, so it didn't matter. One of the main things in my process of unlearning to be violent, I, I had a friend who taught me about three principles, transparency, congruence, and integrity. So if I was open and real about who I am and wh wh where I stand on things and that my values, my words, and my behavior lined up, I then had the integrity of being a decent person. Uh, and, and that became primary focus in order to process my need to engage with violence when I was feeling hurt or, or whatever throughout my recovery process. Um, and that's really employed me to, to, to go through a, a change and build a, a level of esteem that became a new self-concept and self-identification. I haven't survived. I've been surviving. Um, it's not done. Uh, I don't think there's an end point. And
And I also know that I don't want to be hurt and that I don't want to hurt other people and just continuing on to do what I can in spite of everything else, um, things will be okay. I've been threatened with bombs. I've been th- uh, death threats, um, threatened to be kidnapped and all sorts of stuff by s- serious guys. I got a, woke up by a, a death threat on the phone and then someone showed up my, at, at my home about 10 minutes later. I've, I've had threats that uh, I won't see it coming. I've had threats that people were going to burn off my tattoos. Um, yeah, uh, I, I've had threats recently that I was going to get uh, beaten with a pipe and thrown into a trunk of a car and killed. The only thing that would have at all influenced me to change while I was in the movement, um, which wasn't available but is now, is other former extremists. There is a possibility at certain points that if someone would have came and talked to me when I was sitting in jail after an an assault and I didn't want to be there and I was broken and crushed and crying because that happens when you're in jail, um, that there may have been a, a, a pivotal point where someone could have got through to me a little better. And if there were resources available um, in order to challenge the belief structure as well as to develop strategies for exit um, or at least disengaging from the violent behavior. But there's so many issues that are involved in in my own process of disengagement that it's not a simple thing and there needs to be more funding for those sorts of things. Otherwise, it cannot happen. Um, Although there are people like me who are former extremists who are doing what we can without pay to, to engage this kind of work. If you don't have the experience of being in the movement and coming out you you miss a lot of subtle pieces. Um, for for instance, uh, recently I've been introduced to a, a an author who did a book on racism within the heavy metal scene, and one of her black research subjects, uh, a, a black female, um, has I I went through her social media stuff because I checked out all of them. And it turns out that that particular girl, even though she's experienced racism, is aligned with white supremacist bikers. And the author of the book who knew that this girl, knew this girl because of the research, knew her and knew some of the challenges, but, and, and has seen that picture in the past, but didn't even pick up on that because she didn't have the full scope of knowledge in, in regards to symbology and stuff. And what means what, and and what it looks like, um, and and all it took for me was a blurred photo to be able to identify what this is, and then to look at deeper problem with this particular individual, and finding out that there there are links. Um, so it, it's real simple, subtle things that can be missed. I had counselors who quit working with me because they were scared about the depth of my knowledge and and when I would be processing things and this doctrine would come out, people wouldn't know how to handle it. So people who specialize in unraveling right-wing doctrine is essential for someone who's exited or exiting. Um, yeah, that would have been really helpful. <laughs>